Hello everyone, that's Mohammed, and in this video I'm updating the ADC multiple channel or scan mode tutorial. If you'll recall from the last two videos on ADC, we only discussed the case where we have a single analog input, and that was relatively straightforward. However, if you have multiple analog inputs, things become slightly more complex. And the main source of complexity is that the ADC has got only one output data register, and only take a single analog input at a time. And this means that if we have multiple analogs, then it will take the first channel and store it in the output data register. And then converting the second channel will overwrite the output data register. And that's where the problem is. Now, there are many simple ways to solve this, but they are ineffective. For instance, the simplest one is to use the single conversion mode that we talked about in the first ADC tutorial. And that's by linking the first channel with the ADC, get the value converted, read the output data register, and then start the ADC all over again but with a different channel. This is possible but it's not efficient because it takes a lot of CPU cycles because you have to start the ADC again, wait for the ADC clock to stabilize and you already wasted a lot of CPU resources. But the scan mode is a hardware solution. So the people who designed the STM chip already thought about this problem and they designed you a nice straightforward way of solving multiple channel problem. And that's what I'm going to attempt to explain to you at this video. So what, what scan mode does is that it employs two things. It employs something in the input and something in the output side. On the input side, it uses something called a sequencer. And the most basic things, what this does is that you store the sequence of channels that you want to convert in the sequencer table, and it will schedule the conversion one at a time. And on the output side, we link a DMA from the output data register of the ADC to the RAM memory, so that at the end of every single conversion, the, the data will be sent to the RAM memory via DMA, so that they don't get overwritten. Let me give you a very easy and simple example to simplify all this out. Let's say that you have four potentiometers and you connected them to channel 0, 2, 5, and 8. The first thing you need to do in scan mode is you need to program the sequence register to uh, schedule channel 0, 2, 5, 8 uh, in the right order. Then you've got to link the output data register to an array of four bytes in this case because I have four inputs so that it store the results in that array. Then you start the ADC. What's simply going to happen is that the uh, result of channel zero will be stored in the first index, channel two in the next index, and so on and so forth. I'm sure you've got the idea by now. So without any delay, let's straight start on CubeMX and this would hopefully clarify anything that you may have missed here. And as usual, click on your project and select that board minus team 30407 VGT. And now we need to enable our analog pins. I've got three potentiometers in the input and I connected them to PA0, 1 and 2. So I've got to enable PA0, set it as analog input. So I've got to choose the same ADC in scan mode. So ADC1 input 0. ADC1 input 1 and ADC1 input 2. So I've enabled all my analog inputs. Next, let's, let me go to the configuration and here we're going to configure our ADC parameters. So first thing, I'm going to set the prescaler to uh, 8. So this will divide the ADC clock by 8 and I've got, I want to change the resolution to 8 bits. Um, you've got to enable scan mode, it's quite important here because that's what this tutorial is all about. And I want to have continuous conversion. So continuous plus scan mode mean it will keep scanning through the channels continuously. And I need to enable DMA because that's how I'm going to transfer the data from the output register to the memory. So this needs to be enabled. And I'm, I'm doing three conversions. I have three inputs. And the first conversion, here is how you set the sequence. I talked to you about the sequence register, and that's how you set it. You set it through something called rank. So rank 1, the conversion that will be converted first, I want this to be channel 0. And it's indeed already set up to channel 0. Uh, I want to change the sampling time to uh, 480. I explained a lot about this in my previous ADC video. So check it out if you want to know more about the sampling time. Um, and the rank 2, the second converted channel, I want this to be channel 1. By default it's set to channel 0 so you've got to change it to channel 1 and uh, again the cycle to 480 
and rank 3 the third and final conversion is channel uh, 2 and again same for the sampling type next we've got to do things and we need to add a DMA uh, Cubex doesn't add it automatically so we've got to add it manually uh, the only option is ADC1 um, and I need to change the data width to byte because my ADC resolution is 8 bits and that's just a byte memory increment is correct because I want to store the next channel into a different location in the array so memory increment will ensure that it increments the index of the array and I need to select the mode to circular which means it will circle around the array if it got to the end of the array it will store the next value again on the first location of the array and this is what this means so that's it for the ADC settings click OK and we're ready to generate the uh, source code uh, you generate source code by clicking on this icon and then click on open project and it will take you to Cal Microvision IDE. On Cal Microvision you need to expand this folder and go to application user and open the main. And as you can see Cubamix have generated the low level code for us and all you've got to do now is just to start programming. The first thing I need to do is I need to uh, declare a variable to store the ADC uh, values. It should be an array array of 8 bits because ADC resolution is 8 bits in my case so I'll call it ADC val array and it would be an array of 3 elements because I've got 3 inputs uh, then I need to start the ADC as DMA there's a function called hal ADC start as DMA and it takes 3 parameters the first parameter is a handle tab diff and it's defined by cubemix at the top so this is the ADC handle tab diff HADC1 the second parameter is the destination of the data, where you want to store the ADC data in. And sure enough, I want to store them in this ADC val array. Uh, but I define it as 8 bit, but this one expects a 32 bit pointer. So I've got to typecast it. Then the uh, data size, 3 bytes. So I'll write 3. And that's simply it. That's all you need to do, really. And I've just got to call this function once at the start because I enable continuous mode. Uh, if I didn't enable continuous mode, I've got to call it whenever I want to get a series of channels converted. So that's it. Uh, I can now compile the code. Compiled without any errors or warning. Now I can upload it by clicking on this button. Successfully uploaded. Uh, now I can enter debugging mode to watch the ADC values. And on debugging mode, the first thing I need to do is I need to add this variable to this array to watch memory so that I can see it in real time. Um, so I can see what the ADC values are. Uh, I'll disable hex display and I'll expand it. Okay, I've already connected my potentiometers. I've got one, uh, I've got three potentiometers already connected them. Now I can start the, um, the code. Okay, perfect. Playing around with my first or second one. So minimum 0 and maximum 255 and then the second one I think why else I'll slightly lose yeah minimum 0 maximum 255 and now the third one minimum and maximum perfect all of them are working so scan mode works perfectly and that's simply how to implement ADC scan mode with the help of CubeMX it's absolutely simple and straightforward uh, however now I'm going to show you how to implement this without the help of CubeMX uh, but if Cubemix was all you're looking for, you may stop the video here and uh, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. Uh, but now I'm going to show you how to do this without Cubemix. And to do this without Cubemix, we've got to start everything on Kyle Microvision. So click on a project and select your Microvision project. You need to select a location to store the file in. Now I've got to select the board, it's DM32 of 407. And I need to select the software components. So first thing I need to enable the core bit, and uh, I need to go to device and enable startup. Uh, STM Cube framework, and I want to use the classic framework. And you've got to enable some other software components that this classic depends on. Uh, if you click resolve, they will be enabled automatically. So I'll click resolve. Um, next, I need to enable ADC because I need to use ADC. Uh, I've got to enable DMA as well, so resolve. Um, can I think that's all I need. So I'm ready, I can click OK now. And as you can see, uh, Cal Microvision included some software libraries that you would need. And they're the Hull libraries. 
However, Kalma Vision doesn't add you a main file, so you've got to add our main manually. So select C file and name it main. And in my empty main, I need to uh, include the header file of the whole library and also write the main function as follows. Um, then I'd need to set up my TPI opens. I've got three potentiometers connected to PA0, PA1, and PA2. So I've got to enable those three pins and set them to analog. And I'll do this in a function called GPI or config. Uh, function takes no parameter and return no parameter. And in this function, I will define it to the bottom here. Uh, so if you want to get an idea on how to set up a GPI or config, um, I described this in my last ADC tutorial, but I'll do that again. So you've got you go to the GPIO library, and it's very well documented, and will take you step by step in how to set up a pin. Um, according to this description, how to use this driver, the first thing is I need to enable the port clock. I need to enable the port clock, and in this case is port A. Then I need to do the config using GPIO init type diff, and then pass this as a parameter to this function. And I'll call it my pins config or init. And then I use this one just like using a structure to set up my pin as analog. So you will see now if I do this one dot, I can select the pin and I want three pins GBI open pin 0, 1, and 2. Um, I can use this or sign to do all of them at the same time. Then I can select the mode. Uh, mode is analog, obviously. So GPIO mode, and you can do the auto text by control space, and it will suggest I need analog. Um, that's all I need. Now I can call in the function according to the driver and pass this configuration parameter, and it will implement them. The GPIO init function takes two parameters. It takes the port, which is port A, and the handle type diff that we use to initialize the bin. Uh, and it's a pointer to that type diff. So I need to do the ampersand sign and then paste the name of that in a type diff. And that's simply how you uh, configure the pin and set it to analog. Now we're going to configure our ADC device using a similar method. So I'll define a separate function to configure my ADC. Uh, the function takes no parameter, return no parameter, similar thing. And I'll define it at the bottom here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll refer to the ADC driver to read the instruction on how to use this driver. I'm sure by now you got the idea. If you use anything in the whole driver, the easiest way is to refer to the driver itself. So refer to ADC driver and see what it suggests. Um, and clearly here, how to use this driver. First step is to enable ADC clock, ADC peripheral clock. And we're using ADC one, so we need to write one here. Uh, the next thing is to configure the ADC parameters. So things like resolution, data alignment, uh, prescaler, and so on. Um, and we use this function to configure those parameters. Uh, but this function will be called at the end. And this function expects a handle type diff, an ADC handle type diff. Uh, for this one, we need to define it globally because we're gonna ref we need to use it in the main. So we need to make it a global variable. So ADC handle type diff. Um, I'll call it my ADC handle. Um, so we need to do this one to configure the ADC parameters. So as usual, dot. The first thing is the instance. This will select, <coughs> excuse me, which ADC device we're using. And sure enough, it's ADC one. Then we'll do a series of initialization. The first one perhaps is the clock prescaler, and I want to set the clock prescaler to eight, just like what I did in Cubemx and then the resolution and all the others. I'll do them, I'll pause the video now, and I'll copy and paste them, just to save time. Okay, so here are the rest of the initialization for the ADC. Clock prescaler to uh, eight. Uh, well, another clock prescaler, I need to delete it. Uh, resolution to eight bit, scan mode enable, continuous mode enable, uh, discontinuous mode obviously disabled, external trigger none, data alignment to right, number of conversion to three, Deem a request must be enabled, and end of conversion selection is at the end of every single conversion. Actually, I want to change this to the end of the series of conversion. Yeah, sequence conversion. And then, when you finish with this, you call the HAL ADC in it to implement those configurations. So, I need to pass the handle or a pointer to that handle type diff, and I'm done. And the next thing, according to the 
ABC driver is to configure the channels and we use a, f a different function this time uh, but I'm sure you already got the idea that we are gonna call the function at the end we would need to use some sort of structure and it's ADC channel config type diff so I need to define it I don't have to define it globally because I don't need to use it in our anywhere else so ADC channel config type diff yep I'll call it my ADC channel and on this one my ADC channel dot channel I need to select channel 0 first and then the rank uh, to 1 because I want channel 1 to be converted channel 0 to be converted first that's why I need to set the rank to 1 and the sampling time uh, I need to set the sampling time to 480 as I did with Cubemix yep now I need to call in the ADC config channel function to implement those configuration parameter for channel 0 and then we'll do the same for channel 1 so uh, this one takes two parameters it takes the ADC handle type diff the original one and a pointer to that and the second parameter is the um, channel type diff it uses both of them for some reason so that's it now I need to copy the same setting but for channel 1 and 2 um, except I need to change the channel and rank so for channel 1 the rank would have to be 2 because this needs to be converted second and same thing you call in this function multiple times to implement uh, the specific setting for that specific channel now for channel 2 the rank would be uh, 3 because that's going to be the third converted value so that's all for ADC configuration and finally we need to configure our DMA uh, and I'll do this in a separate function as well call it DMA config uh, but this time it will take a parameter, it will take ADC handle type diff parameter. I know you will say that it's already globally defined, but there is a reason for doing it this way. And I'll define it at the bottom here. And the first thing to do, as, as always with all HAL driver, is to enable the DMA clock. But there are two DMAs in, on this DM. So you first need to read the date sheet slightly and see which DMA the ADC hardware is connected to. So going to the date sheet, reference manual rather, uh, we need to scroll down to the DMA section and you need to go to DMA oh, channel selection. And according to these two tables, DMA2 table shows that ADC1 is in fact connected to DMA2. So I need to enable DMA2. Then, according to the DMA uh, driver, I need to open DMA driver. It says that I need to do some initialization by calling hull DMA init. Just like what we did with the ADC, call it at the end. And this function takes a one and only parameter, DMA handle type diff. Call it my DMA type diff. And we use this to set the DMA parameters. So this handle type diff dot instance, and that's going to be DMA DMA two stream zero. And then they will do some initialization. The first one perhaps is the channel, and it's channel zero according to this table in the date sheet. It's on channel zero because stream zero has got eight channels, and we've got select channel zero. Yeah. And I'll do a series of initialization. I'll copy and paste them to save time and I'll explain it to you. Uh, so beside channel, we also set the direction to from peripheral to memory because we are transferring data from a peripheral device, which is ADC to the memory. And peripheral increment is disabled. So we don't want to increment the address of the peripheral. It's going to be the same peripheral. Memory increment is enabled because we need to increment the memory location to store them in a different memory location different channels a peripheral data alignment to byte memory data alignment to byte as well uh, this is rather the um, data size um, and the reason why we put byte is because our ADC is set to 8 bits resolution to 8 bits which is just a byte um, we enable DMA circular so that it continuously automatically go back to the first position in the array and DMA priority to low and we disable the FIFO 
and now we need to pass this to the function to implement those parameters or those configurations. Uh, I also need to link the DMA device to the ADC uh, and that's just this will just link the two handle type diff together so that when we start in a an ADC uh, transfer it, will, it can refer to this type diff and get the DMA settings and vice versa so this doesn't do anything on hardware it just do the software linking of the two type diffs together uh, one final thing I need to do in the DMA setting is to enable the DMA interrupt we use these two functions to enable the DMA interrupt so the first one will set the priority of that interrupt and the second one will enable that interrupt and what DMA interrupt does is that at the end of every DMA transaction it does things like address increment and so on uh, so that's all for DMA configuration we configure the DMA device we link it to the ADC type diff and we enable its interrupt now all we've got left is to call in those functions those configuration function in the main to implement the configurations the first one is to call hull init function this one is a this will initialize everything to the default value it's a very good practice to call this at the start of every uh, program uh, and then I obviously need to call in these three function and this one takes this parameter so by calling these three functions I would set up my pin configure my ADC and configure and enable my DMA uh, then I need to uh, call ADC start to start the ADC transaction as DMA and this expect uh, three parameters the first one is ADC handle time diff and then the uh, destination where you want to store your data in and the size so I need to define a variable here I'll call it uh, it's an unsigned 8-bit because my data are in bytes and it has to be a an array of three elements because I've got three inputs in fact similar to what we did in uh, cubemx uh, but because this function expect unsigned 32 and again I need to type cast it to 32-bit uh, pointer and the data size to 3 so this would start the DMA, get the value converted and store them automatically into this array. So I think we're done. We're ready to compile the code and upload it to the bot. So let's compile the code now and see if we get any errors or warnings. Okay, there is one bug that we need to fix before we get into debugging mode. I just found it now. And that is the DMA handle type diff. This was defined locally, but it's meant to be defined globally because it's going to be used by other files as external variables so we need to define it as a global variable in this file now we should compile it again upload it to the board and back to debugging mode and now it should work okay so on debugging mode the first thing is we need to add this variable to the watch memory so that we can see it um, I will disable the hex display and expand it so let's run the code straight away okay that is working so let me play around with the first potentiometer yeah, it's changing 0 to maximum 255 and then the second potentiometer 2550 and the third potentiometer it's 255 and back to 0 so scan mode is working perfectly and this is how to implement ADC scan mode using HAL drivers without the help of Cubemx and if you didn't follow along with the code that's fine I'm gonna link this down in the description so that you can just copy and paste it to the main and it will do the same thing uh, now to the third part really quickly I'm going to show you how to do this w using direct register access um, direct register access is very complex but I'll give you a rough idea and we'll see how that goes so the first thing we need to do if you want to use the uh, I'll delete all the main code because we've got to write all of that again and with the direct register access you don't need any of those HAL drivers so you can disable them so I'll go to the um, software components and I'll, I'll disable all the HAL drivers I'll leave the basic one but I'll disable all the HAL drivers so stm32 cube HAL I'll disable all of them uh, and I also got to disable the classic so I just need the startup and click OK so you see all of them disappeared now I, I've already written this in advance so I'll just copy and paste it and I'll show you how that works and here is the code for the direct register access uh, it might look horrible but it's not too hard if you know the idea 
So the first thing is we include STM32 of 4xx without the hull extension. So this is not the hull driver, this is just the basic STM driver. Um, we had we have the same function prototype, almost the same, except we had to define our own start ADC function uh, because we're not using hull drivers anymore. And down the debugger configuration is we're directly accessing RCC register to enable port A clock and DBI or motor register to set the mode to analog so when you go to the datasheet or reference manual and go to GPI or registers so you have this motor register that can select the analog mode and you can also go to the RCC register for the clock things um, DMA config similar idea so you go RCC registers to enable any clocks um, you've got to go to the DMA register if you want to set all of these settings I can walk you through all of them, but it will take me at least half an hour. So I'll leave that for you to discover it. Um, the idea is you look at the name of this register in the reference manual and see what the settings are. And I have I've written a description and document and comments as much as I possibly can. So you can refer to my comments and um, refer to the date sheet at the same time. And that's for ADC config as well. I talk a little bit about this in my previous ADC video, but this is far more detailed and I have some comments so you can read the comments and go to ADC1 register and see what I'm exactly doing in here uh, and this is the routine to start the ADC with DMA well, it has got something like clearing some bits and uh, setting source address and so on so I'll put this I'll put a link for this down in the description so that you can you can read it in your own time for now I'll just compile it and upload it to the board and I'll show you that it actually works Okay, compiled and uploaded successfully. Now let's go to debug mode um, and see that we get the same pattern. Okay, in debugging mode, our variable is already in the watch memory, so you can start straight away. Perfect. You see the values are appearing there, so it's working out. Per hour with my potentiometers and the third one. Okay, all nice and good, all working. And that's how to implement ADC scan mode in the direct register access method. Uh, and this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. I hope you found it useful. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video.